In today's episode, we're going to be hearing from someone who's been in this industry for 26 years now, has over 19,000 plus hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching alone in it, has written a global bestseller translated into 13 different languages on a specific method that he developed while working with professional athletes like Kobe Bryant, Rafael Nadal, and many others. I'm choking on this one because I'm actually talking about myself. Now I don't have anyone else to come into the ho Now I don't have anyone else to come into this show and host it. So the inaugural episode of interviewing someone on a key idea, skill, or ability that's helped transform their coaching is with myself. So I had to do my intro. I hope you'll excuse it uh, because I'm not here to puff up my chest. I love this industry and I'm going to be consuming and accumulating a lot more hours, more than that 19,000 hours that I've already done over the last 26 years. All right. So let's kick on with a key mindset around coaching, which I call caution tape. And I have this idea when I'm working with a client or I have people coming into our group programming where I'm mentoring other thought leaders or entrepreneurs or top performers. And still, I still coach and mentor top level athletes. That caution tape wraps around their head. And I've said this on stages that people find it. Uh, and I've said this on stages that when people ask me, uh, what's one of the first things that I'm looking for? That's a mindset issue or challenge that people have. Because again, and I understand it. If you've been in the mental game coaching world for a long time and you talk about it, that the natural reaction would be, okay, well, give us some tips or what are some frames that you've got to help people? Well, this is actually one of them. One of the last places I want to make a problem with someone is their mental game, their inner game. And it's one of the things I see many coaches do is when a client comes in, because remember this entire process that any of us go through or experience when a client finally comes to work with us or they come into a cohort or a group program is when they're finally hiring a coach, a mentor, a leader, an advocate, an expert, They've gone through a long process of trying to make change happen for themselves. Because think of it, the client's journey goes like this. They discover that there's some sort of challenge or issue or gap in their skill sets. And once they find and discover that, they go and they start to sometimes research it. They lean into it a little bit more. They want to discover more about it. And that might be going to YouTube videos or it might be uh, reading some articles online. It might be you know, trying to find and be inspired by someone on social media. Heck, they might even go and buy some books on it as well. They might even then go and attend some courses or buy some online digital courses. But the assumption we can never make is that they've actually committed to change. They've been interested in it because they've expressed interest. They've done a bunch of activity that expresses their interest in trying to learn more about it, discover more about it, get better at it. But we don't know if anyone's actually executed on it. And maybe they have executed on it, but they've been doing it through their own capacities. And now they're at the point where they're crossing a huge chasm. There's a big leap before someone actually starts reaching out to any one of us to work with us, right? Because they've been doing it on their own. And there's a very small percentage of people who say, you know what, I'm raising my hand. I wanna get coached on this. I wanna get some help on this. I wanna get some mentoring on this, whatever the lens is. And so they cross that huge chasm and now they're on our side of the equation and they're saying, Hey, mister, hey, missus, hey, miss, whatever. Could you help me with this? And when they're coming into that, the narrative that a lot of times people have about why they might not have achieved the thing that they are trying to accomplish is there's something about me. There's something about my way. There's something about my beliefs or my attitudes that I might have. 
Now, the metaphor I have in my own mind around when someone says, I, might, I think it's a belief issue as to why I can't do this, or it's something on the inside. It's an inner game thing, or it's a mental game thing. It's a mindset thing. I want to be very cautious with that. And I want to give you this metaphor. I look at it as there is a spider's web inside of people's heads. And the moment we make it a belief issue or a mindset issue, we've now just plucked that little spider's web. And now that big monstrous spider comes crumbling down on them and only adds more resistance or weight or heaviness, more obstacles and challenges for that person to slay the dragon to get to where they want to go, slay the proverbial spider in this case. So there's caution tape that I think about having wrapped around someone's head. I don't want to make it about the stuff between the six inches of their ears right away. And the great thing about that is when you don't approach everything through the lens of, oh, it's an inner game problem, we can actually solve things a lot faster for people. So the idea there is don't always accept the problem or the frame that the client is giving you. I always want to challenge that frame. I always want to challenge that problem because I'm not going to accept it yet because I don't know yet. I need to clarify. I need to ask, well, tell me more about that. Um, when did this start? Where did it start? And ultimately, if I can make something actually an issue in their environment, which is one of the largest reasons for success in our lives, shaping our environment so that it makes it easier for us to go and do the thing. It's like greasing the slide, so to speak. If I can make it, no, 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 <laughs> before you make it about yourself, it's literally that your environment isn't set up for your success. So let's just shift the environment. Let's move the papers around. Let's, you know, lay out the clothing in the morning or making it very simple for someone. And they go, oh, really? It's not? And remember, because you're an authority, you have credibility with people. You saying it and setting the frame relaxes the client because you didn't go to and agree with them on the fact that this is actually a mindset issue. And I can tell you as someone who built a massive mental game coaching company, working with some of the most elite people on the planet, when someone would hear me say, no, wait, before we make this a mindset issue, my friend, let's investigate this a little bit more. I'm breaking their frame. They're like, oh, wait, but I thought you were the mindset guy. No, no, no. Yeah. Yes, we do help people on that. But a part of the world of mindset is also organizing the environment or helping to shape better behaviors and routines or rituals in your life, which are all at the physical level. I'm not going inside quite yet. It's one of the last places that I want to go. Now, again, when you're coaching people through that process, you are shifting paradigms. So it is a process of shaping the mental game, but I'm not diving into beliefs. I'm not diving into attitudes and plucking that spider's web and creating more resistance than I ever need to be. And I've seen this happen because a lot of clients will have come to myself and maybe even you over the years that have gone through many other coaches or leaders or experts or mentors, whatever the case might be. And that person came with uh, an understanding that it was something about their inner game. They haven't been able to solve it. And then they have me saying, no, this is not, this is not a you thing. This is not your beliefs. It's not your attitude. It's actually this over here. And you can literally see people relax in the moment. And that is one of the great gifts of what we get to experience every single day is seeing someone, whether it's in a video and you're doing something online with them, or it's in a physical location, or it's in a workshop and you can see stress and anxiety melt off of them because you just shifted their perspective and melted away a bunch of the invisible strings that were holding them back. You clipped them for people. So when you're working with people, avoid 
this natural superpower that many coaches feel like they have. And that superpower is bringing that ultimate big sledgehammer that you've got and you swing it and you can crush a belief issue. You can crush an attitude issue. You can crush some of those internal paradigms that hold people back. But if you always swing that big hammer, that means you're always making it about beliefs and inner game challenges for people, which is a mistake. So we want to make sure that we're honoring who it is that's in front of us. And we need to make sure that we're investigating really well with someone with great questions, diagnostically trying to dig in and find a root cause that might be there. And not all root causes lead back to deep inner belief challenges for people. Sometimes the root cause is they're just using the wrong tool which is a physical thing. Be mindful of that massive ecosystem that we operate in when it comes to human or organizational performance. And so if we're only flexing our muscle and saying, oh, look how great I am, look how powerful I am, and I'm gonna go and attack those deep recess issues that might be inside of us, uh, we might be creating problems for people that are just fundamentally not even there and we all know based on spiritual, based on psychological traditions that because of the narrative around beliefs, and we all have them, it's unavoidable. The narrative is that when something is a belief issue for someone, that's deep, that's challenging, that's difficult to overcome. Remember, your clients are coming with that already existing paradigm. Even coaches thinking, okay, well, this is going to be a belief issue with people. There's a weight to that. There's a challenge to that. There's a timeline to that as well. It's like, it's going to take several months to do it. Well, what if it doesn't need to take several months because it's not a belief issue? And because people have this pervasive narrative around something being a belief issue, it creates a bigger challenge than it needs to be. So when you pull back and you say, you know what, this isn't a lack of belief that you have. I know you've been saying that, and that's the one that you've glommed onto. That's the one that you've attached yourself to. But what if it wasn't a belief issue? And that's a key question. Keep that in your back pocket. What if this isn't a belief issue? Even the tonality of it, the way you say it, you're, you're lightening the load with the tonality. What if it wasn't a belief issue? I've been doing this a really long time and I'm not convinced that you have a belief issue here. I think it actually might be something else that's going on. And you're allowing that person to then settle into a new idea. What you're also doing is you're removing the opportunity for them to embrace a story or narrative that might be holding them back. Because that's their consistent narrative. Oh no, it's a me thing. It's a belief issue. And you're saying, hey, listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I'm not convinced. I've seen this happen over and over again. A line that I use all the time is, this is just eating Cheerios for me. I eat it every single day. I do this every single day. And this is pretty simple. Inviting people into a brand new possibility then opens up a doorway for them to accept, to, for them to then accept a new paradigm. And if I can get them to accept that, even if it was a belief issue, I can get them to settle down their nerves, which then creates a space for us to tackle a new possibility for people. So after doing this for 26 years and all of these hours and thousands of hours of working with people, that's just one of the frames and ideas that I have for you, which is think of caution tape around people's heads. One of the last places I want to make a problem for people is their beliefs about themselves and the world around them. 
and instead chunk it up to something that might be lighter or easier or more simple, something that's more actionable. It might be in their environment, it might be in their behaviors, something that is easy to implement as a habit or a new routine and lighten that load for people. Because I think you and I both know after our own experiences of working with people, there's a lot of people carrying around some pretty heavy weights. And um, that's what I love about coaching is if we can reach into that backpack that people are wearing, that's invisible to them and we can lighten the load and take it out and you can physically see the shift that happens in them where they, you know, actually de-stress, they de-anxiety for themselves. That's, that's one of those feedback loops that we get to be paid with beyond the monetary side of things every single day, um, which then can make a super big impact in the way that that person shows up in the world and who they then go and impact, whether it's their own kids, it's their spouses, it's their own teams, it's just being a better citizen in the world. This is the most beautiful part about coaching is those uh, amazing ripples that we all get to create in the world. So there you have it. Our very first episode done in the books, in the can. You won't need to hear from me and only me in most of the other episodes. I might come in and drop another one every now and then, sprinkle in some, but um, I hope you'll enjoy all of the other amazing guests that we've got waiting for you over the next several weeks, months, and years. Because like I said, I've been doing this for 26 years and I'll be doing it on my very final day on this planet. I know it. I hope that's the gift that I get to give uh, to other people. So thanks again. And we will see you in the next episode. Hold on to the editors. Um, I think we're going to do an alternative one, uh, an alternative ending. Okay. So. Let's use this one. So there you go. That's the end of our very first episode around uh, a skill, a technique, an ability to help you uh, level up as a coach. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast because I'll be bringing in, like I said, a lot more experts and phenomenal talents and people into this recording studio for you and share it with me, any insights that you've got on social media from today's episode, a favorite line, a favorite mind frame, a new paradigm, whatever it is, tag me on social media. You can find the links um, on the website or at Todd underscore Herman and also tag UpCoach as well. So thank you so much and we'll see you in the very next episode.